Hey everybody, welcome in, welcome to today's story. Let me make sure everything is up and running. I think it is. Let's just go. Today I'm going to talk about portfolio risk management, and this is on the heels of the Mike Novogratz letter and the chaos in the markets. And it's just a time to reflect and share kind of how I view the world and some of the stuff I see going on and cover a whole bunch of stuff. So I think there's a valuable lesson or five or 10 in here for you all. Let's jump in. Math, money, and freedom. Disclaimer, no, this is financial advice. And finally, chaos. I think uh, somebody told me today, chaos is a time to re-examine, time to go back to first principles thinking. And we're gonna weave into the message today, kind of Elon Musk, who's a brilliant first principles thinker, portfolio management, lessons we can all learn, what other people have done, how other people manage their portfolios, how I view my portfolio now, and a whole bunch more. Let's go. First of all, remember, crypto can be very risky. 98% will go to zero. Sorry for the graphic image, but things can blow up. So be careful out there. And some of the smartest people in the world have learned that lesson the hard way. So second of all, through the trigger for this, by the way, let me zoom out for a second. I was actually going to make a different video today. I'm going to look at kind of opportunities related to portfolio management, create a new portfolio. So if anybody wants to see that new portfolio, drop a comment below and we can do it tomorrow or the next day. But anyway, <clears throat> this was all triggered by Mike Novogratz's letter on tenets of investing. Uh, Galaxy Digital lost a lot of money on Luna. Not only them, but others too. We'll talk about them later. But think about how much research and how many teams of people that were researching and analyzing this project. Think of the time that Mike put into even getting his Luna tattoo. And he said, sometimes you have a good idea that just fails. And that was Luna. So the question is, how can we all learn from this? I had a small position on Luna. I calculated my actual position size before it imploded uh, a month before. And it was about 0.6% of all of my crypto. So I thought it was approximately around one. It ended up being a little bit less because, well, it's just the nature of these. But the problem is I lost and I was enamored by Luna. I got sucked in because once the algorithmic stable coin was going to become Bitcoin backed, I became a Luna bull. I was sucked in, but not enough to uh, for it to put a big dent in my portfolio because we always knew there was peg risk, uh, not saying what it should have cut or anything like that. It's just the nature of the beast. But the thing is, uh, a lot of people have come out and they've been, you know, very reflective on this. And I just want to share kind of some key lessons. So the question back is, how can we learn? How can we risk? How can we hedge? Hedge our risk, I mean, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So first of all, let's deconstruct Mike's tenets of investing. Number one, he says, keep a diversified portfolio. Well, that depends. And I'll talk more about why that depends. Number two, take profits along the way. Yes, that depends too. I'll talk about that. Three, have a risk management framework. Yes, I firmly agree. And four, understand all investments happen in a macro framework. We are all learning the importance of macro today. I've been talking about macro for a long time, but even with this kind of downdraft, I thought we kind of hit bottom uh, when the Ukraine invasion happened. Uh, I didn't expect it to get a whole lot worse, and I didn't expect the Luna implosion to happen and, you know, tech stocks to be completely assassinated. So again, there's learnings for everybody here. So let's talk about a couple of key lessons before we go and analyze portfolios further. First of all, how big do you go in? Position size is very important. Do you put all your chips on the table in one asset? That could be dangerous, but there can be times when it's possible. Second of all, is the if the risk of the asset is is high and the position is too large yes it can blow up and again anybody who had a high concentration of luna got hurt bad we'll talk more about some of those people too um second of all if you have a position that's too small you may miss out on the opportunity imagine you just had one share of tesla or no bitcoin etc one or two years three years ago knows it. So it cuts both ways. Um, now, one of the things as well about position size, Kathy Wood always limits her position to 10% of her portfolio. It's part of the rules she has to abide by. 
If not, I, I'm pretty sure you should have mostly Tesla at this stage in your account. Now, another risk as well that a lot of people have been frustrated with is locking yourself in. For example, locking yourself into Ethereum, etc. You can miss out on other trades and other opportunities. So I never like to have lose flexibility or locking myself in um, for obvious reasons. So think about that too as well. And also an old one, but a good one is I know so many people that never bought uh, 100 shares of Tesla because it was too expensive at $200. People didn't have $20,000 to invest. And people always have this mindset that they need to buy 100 shares or something. But that is not right. In fact, with the potential potential 5-1 stock split coming up in maybe August or September of this year, depending on when the board meeting is, 20 shares could become 100 for those who want 100 shares. But again, it doesn't matter if it's one share or 10 shares, but sometimes people don't buy stuff because it's too costly or costs too much. So now let's talk a bit about some portfolio examples out there and we'll see exactly what some of the best names in the business have done. So first of all, this is the A16Z portfolio and you will see some of the names here you'll recognize. These are names I don't know how much A16Z has, but I do know that they invested in some of these names. And you will see that most of them year to date are down between 60 to 85%. Avalanche, Near Protocol, Uniswap, Filecoin, Maker, Salo, Airweave, Compound, Oasis Network, uh, Rally, you name it. These are all names you all know. Now we don't know, of course, what price these guys got in at, but or if they're even still holding. But the point is, Again, having a broad basket in a sector that has very high risk names can really be dragged down. Let's look at Alameda Research. This is the top name in the business working alongside Sam Bankman Fried. Again, very similar picture. You've got Dodo, D Hedge, SushiSwap, um, Alpha Finance, etc., etc., Compound. Very different names Serum, Ave, some similar. Uniswap, for example, with A16Z, but some very different names. And again, all down between 60 to 85% year to date. So it is hard. Let's look at uh, CZ from Binance. He just uh, jokingly tweeted he's poor again after losing 1.6 billion uh, on Luna. That $1.6 billion asset is now worth $3,000. And again, smart guy, one of the smartest guys, one of the wealthiest people on earth as well. Lost a ton of money. And let's switch gears and go for a little bit of a traditional view before we talk about my approach to this world. Now, Oracle of Omaha, you've seen this before. Why diversification is only required when investors do not understand what they're doing. Real simple. And, you know, the question is, does it make sense? So I do know I've analyzed his portfolio over a long time, and I do know that Apple saved his portfolio. And this is why. Even though I sold my Apple at 140 last year to buy Tesla, which still is above water when you look at the swap price, but you can see 48% of Berkshire's total portfolio is Apple. And uh, the rest is heavily concentrated in Bank of America, 13%, American Express, maybe 9%, Chevron, 8%, Coca-Cola, 8%, etc. And Occidental Petroleum, they just added about 4%. So you can see here, heavy concentration, Tech, banks, a little bit of oil. So we'll see where all this goes. But even, even Warren is extremely concentrated in one asset. And this takes me back to kind of the way I approach the market. So let's ask ourselves a question. Does it make sense to diversify a portfolio? So first of all, I like to approach things in thirds. I like to be one third real estate, if at all possible. One third kind of Bitcoin crypto, heavy Bitcoin. Bitcoin, crypto, and one-third disruption, disruption stocks. If you look at my portfolio today, I'm literally 80% Tesla, 80% Bitcoin. And the Tesla will belong in the yellow portion. The Bitcoin belongs obviously in the red portion. And of course, the real estate is what you hopefully always have. Now let's talk about kind of risk. So I was trying to frame up how can I explain how I manage portfolio and diversification. So if you look at the probability of real estate going to zero, it's about 0.5%, maybe less than that, but I'm packing this up. I always say the probability of Bitcoin going to zero is 1%. It's really less than half a percent, but we'll call it 1%. And the probability of Tesla going to zero is say 3%. Again, 
relative risk adjustments. And I want you all to think about risk. So the question is, does it make sense for me to be heavily concentrated in these assets? So let's look at the portfolio and what I call the EV expectation introduces to you guys uh, yesterday and many times before in the past. So to try and explain, does it make sense to diversify? If you imagine hypothetical portfolio, it could be $100,000 of each or a million dollars of each. For simplicity, we chose a million dollars today. We have, imagine, uh, real estate worth a million dollars. By the way, in San Francisco, you cannot buy a condo under a million dollars just for relative perspective. And I know there's different parts of the world where a million dollars is a lot of money. It's a lot of money anywhere. But again, this is just an illustration. And imagine you have a million dollars in Bitcoin and you have a million dollars in Tesla. Your total portfolio is three million. Your... Uh, SHTF probability, as I mentioned before, is 0.5% for real estate of it going to zero, 1% for Bitcoin, and 3% for Tesla. Now, I have a bunch of expected probabilities for expected case value over the next eight years. So, for example, the real estate worth a million today could go to 3 million, that's based on expected appreciation rate of about 15% per year. The bear case real estate is 10% appreciation per year, and the bull case is 20% appreciation per year. If you look at real estate in the United States over the last 12 months, it's all up over 20%. And Bitcoin, again, I have my expected price expectation of $890,000 per Bitcoin. A bear case is $150,000. That is literally... That's almost like an SHTF, the something hit the fan uh, price, 150000 That'll happen if nobody else goes in to the network. That's just based on currency debasement. And the bull case is about $1.4 million. And if you have a million dollars in Bitcoin today, that's about 34 and a half Bitcoin. Then Tesla, you have the expected uh, case of a uh, price of Tesla in 2030 per share about ten thousand dollars my bear case is about 2900 and my bull case is about fifteen thousand and the different probabilities of the bear expected and bull is 50 percent expected 25 percent bear and 25 percent bull case but you've got to take out the hit the fan probability and that leaves you the net amount so based on this your property uh, goes to an expected value of about 3 million at the end of 2030. Your Bitcoin will go from $1 million today to about 28 million. That sounds crazy at 28x from today. But remember, when you look at adoption, Metcalfe's law, and the sheer scarcity of this thing, it's very, very possible. Remember, expected case is 890, uh, bear case 150, and bull case 1.4. So that's how this all works out. The actual expected value per Bitcoin, if you take 28 million divided by 34.48, you'll get a lot less than 890,000. And finally, Tesla, your million dollars becomes about $13 million. The overall portfolio will do a 14x, but the interesting thing to note is how the portfolio skews. The real estate, and in the beginning, real estate, Bitcoin, Tesla were a third, a third, a third. And in 2030, they get skewed heavily towards Bitcoin, making up nearly 63% of the portfolio. Tesla 30% and real estate shrinks from 33% to 7%. So that's how I look at things. Now, the question is that many people have. Uh, let's go back to the rules here. Stop losses. What happens if something turns against you? If something, heaven forbid, happens to Elon Musk. He talked about that last week. It rattled a lot of people. But make sure you do not suffer more than 25% drawdown. I know that's easy to laughable to say in this market because a lot of stuff is down 60 to 80%. But remember, if your thesis changes or you're nervous about something, start putting those stop losses in. And remember, beware on using stop losses on crypto because you can't get wicked out there. Are people that look at it and the wicks are extremely volatile. But just have your, your drop dead price where you need to get out, uh, whatever the case may be. I have one for Solana, I have one for Bitcoin, I have one for Ethereum, and they're all around my average cost basis that I got in at initially. Second, always reevaluate your thesis, cut your losses. Don't get married to a losing position. Mentioned this before, very obvious. Third, 
Uh, we're getting more into swinging and pair trading. Know your time frames, play the swing. So for example, with a stock, it could be around earnings. With Bitcoin, it could be around the halving. We expect a bonkers rally to happen after the next halving. But maybe the asset's so big, maybe it won't be that big at all. But again, know when to be in a position for a certain market event. Next one is take initial investment off the table. But remember, this is very important. Rebalance to a better asset if there is one. Don't do a Kathy Wood is once every time a Tesla grows to more than 10% of her portfolio, she has to sell some and take some off the table. If she didn't do that, her portfolios would be RK would be doing a lot better than it would have. So in my view, if Tesla appreciates, I'm not going to take it off the table unless I believe Google or some other asset will outperform it over time. So right now I can't find a better equity than Tesla. I can't find a better pristine asset than Bitcoin. They're both very different, but they're both very disruptive and have a very bright future in my opinion, but I could be wrong. Next is the conclusion. So a couple of quick rules here. Uh, have a mix of assets. It could be stocks, your pension, your retirement, your 401k, your FSA or whatever they call it in Europe, etc. Your home real estate and your crypto. Think of things in three or four little buckets, uh, however they are. So make sure you can have your core holdings, your core pension, your castle, etc. And then have your stuff that you can afford to lose. It's one of the things that uh, Mike Novogratz mentioned as well. I personally am a little bit irresponsibly long um, because I am maybe a little bit crazy, but again, not financial advice, but I do believe firmly in things like Tesla and Bitcoin and some other assets too. Always back winners. That's very, very important as well. Spend a lot of time identifying them and backing them and holding on tight. And third is high conviction. This is very, very important to have Identify these assets and have high conviction in getting into them. Don't just dabble. If you think something is really revolutionary, don't just put a little bit of money in. Like a lot of people say, oh, have at least one or 2% of Bitcoin. I have more than that. But uh, again, think of that. If you want exponential gains, sometimes you have to have very high conviction, but that requires a lot of homework, a lot of research as well. So think about that too. And remember, investing is a blood sport. A lot of people got their nose bloodied. I did uh, over the last few weeks. Um, a lot of people did. So we're not preaching here, just sharing some of the key things that you need to be aware of and how you need to approach. And again, the other important thing is always have powder, always manage risk, never expose yourself so you can get completely liquidated and wiped out. That would not be a good situation. Second last point is remember, this is a transformational time. The world is going to reset. We just don't know when. It's going to happen. Every day I read stuff and I think, wow, everything is broken here. Something has to break. Something has to snap. Therefore, this is a transformational time to be in transformational assets as we go forward. Finally, proof. A great reset is required. Uh, this was Elon Musk tweeting today. Despite Tesla doing more for the environment than any company ever, and the rock turning around, what is an ESG score? And the little girl, I can hardly read, let me see. She said, it determines how compliant your business is with the leftist agenda. Not getting political or anything like this, but again, everything is broken. How companies are organized is broken. How governments are organized is broken. How the IMF is organized is broken. How money markets are working today is broken. Something will break. So be on the right side of that as we go forward, everybody. Hang tight, wear your seatbelt, as I always say. Hope you like the content, and I'll see you all tomorrow. And again, drop a comment below if you want me to do what originally was my planned video today of building a new portfolio. A lot of people asked me for it because Rand did one, say, I want to see yours, so I'm ready to do it. And tomorrow as well, I am interviewing the CEO of HUD8, so we'll talk about mining, all things Bitcoin mining as well. So thank you, everybody. Thank you to moderators and chat too. Love you all. See you tomorrow.